Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its saltiness, how will it become salty again? It's good for nothing except to be thrown away and trampled under people's feet. Word of God, word of life. 
A reading from 2 Corinthians. St. Paul writes, This is why we don't get discouraged, given that we received this ministry in the same way that we received God's mercy. Instead, we reject secrecy and shameful actions. We don't use deception, and we don't tamper with God's word. Instead, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God by the public announcement of the truth. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are on the road to destruction. The God of this age has blinded the minds of those who don't have faith, so they couldn't see the light of the gospel that reveals Christ's glory. Christ is the image of God. We don't preach about ourselves. Instead, we preach about Jesus Christ as Lord. And we describe ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. God said that light should shine out of the darkness. He is the same one who shone in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay pots so that the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we aren't crushed. We are confused, but we aren't depressed. We are harassed, but we aren't abandoned. We are knocked down, but we aren't knocked out. We always carry Jesus' death around in our bodies so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies. We who are alive are always being handed over to death for Jesus' sake, so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies that are dying. So death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. We have the same faithful spirit as what is written in Scripture, I had faith, and so I spoke. We also have faith, and so we also speak. We do this because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus, and he will bring us into his presence along with you. All these things are for your benefit. As grace increases to benefit more and more people, it will cause gratitude to increase, which results in God's glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the refrains of the Black Lives Matter movement is the hashtag, say her name, or say his name. It's a way to help our nation not forget the most recent of God's beloved who have suffered extrajudicial killings. Trayvon Martin was killed with Skittles and iced tea in his hands and wearing a hoodie sweatshirt. Tamir Rice, who would have been 18 years old, yesterday, killed for holding a BB gun in his hand at a local park. Brianna Taylor was killed by police after entering her apartment to serve a no-knock warrant in the middle of the night. Ahmaud Arbery was killed for running in a white neighborhood. And George Floyd, whose Death has sparked a protest movement that continues to uncover example after example of Black people in our country killed for no other reason than the color of their skin. Say their names. And now we have heard about Elijah McLean, the 23-year-old Colorado man who was killed by police uh, for walking in his neighborhood with a hood on in the middle of the summer. He had anemia and it made him cold and so he often wore this hood to stay warm. And many are telling the story now of how Elijah 
would take his violin to the animal shelter and play for the kittens. At times, it feels like too much for us as white folk. We've had the privilege for uh, many, many, many years of not knowing the specifics of what's going on in places across the country and even in our own backyards. I'm reminded of the often repeated mantra of AA and other groups in the recovery movement. You are only as sick as the secrets you keep. In the midst of a global pandemic whose containment is not going well in our country, and for which many of us are feeling a weariness about. The stories of how African descent people are treated from microaggressions to outright killing for what seem to be simply occupying a given space continues to be revealed to us. And we cannot look away. As people of faith, who affirm that each and every person is beloved of God, it is our call in this time to say their names, to stand with those calling for change in how society functions so that every single person can be who God created them to be, that they can fully be themselves. In the midst of so many things that feel unsettling, I think St. Paul speaks a word of encouragement to us in this passage that we have from 2 Corinthians. As we learned in the last two weeks, this is the first letter. This section is uh, still a part of that first letter that Paul wrote. Uh, and he's talking to them uh, before the dispute happened, whatever that was. And he writes to the people of the church in Corinth that even in the face of difficulties, he and those who are working with him don't get discouraged because they received their call to ministry at the same time that they received God's mercy. Think about that statement in our own context. We are given ministry at the same time as we are given God's mercy. God's mercy and our call happen at the same time. We are not left without resources to respond to situations and circumstances that are in need of God's love and intervention. And Paul goes on to connect both creation, the light of God at creation, and the light of God's glory seen in the face of Jesus. That light are one and the same. God has been giving light for a very long time. And then he talks about people of faith as clay pots in which is carried both Jesus' life and death. The Message Bible puts this section this way. If you only look at us, you might miss the brightness, Paul says. We carry this precious message around in the unadorned clay pots of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. As it is with us, there's no chance of that. You know for yourselves that we're not much to look at. When we don't know what to do, we know that God does. So in the midst of the trials that Paul and his co-workers were experiencing, Paul says, God never left their side. We've been thrown down, but not broken, he says. What was done to Jesus, Paul and his co-workers have also experienced. And what Jesus did among them, he does in us. He lives. God gives us what is needed to meet the moment 
we don't face pandemic and truth telling without the gifts of Jesus life and light already here with us at the same time. We are equipped by God to face this precise moment of bringing God's life into a time of death and the ongoing unveiling of the ugly truth of racism. As we take steps in faith to be active anti-racist people of faith, at the very same time, God's mercy is given. Acting and receiving happen together. And we have evidence of this dual action of God at work in the world. This weekend is the 51st anniversary of the Stonewall Riot in New York City, when gay and transgender patrons of that dance club rebelled against police who tried to shut it down. That was the spark that was needed for the liberation movement of our LGBTQ siblings whose gifts to society are clearly recognized and welcome. Pride events are held in June to say that LGBTQ people will not be invisible anymore. Tomorrow on June 29th, our church celebrates the 50th anniversary of our predecessor church body's decision to ordain women into the ministry of word and sacrament. And it is uh, 40 years ago this year that we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the first African-American woman to be ordained in our church. Just as 11 years ago, we celebrate the decision to allow LGBTQ people to be both ordained and in a married relationship. There is much that has happened for us to celebrate. We also know that there is much to do. We are discovering again and again the truth of the African word Ubuntu. As you are more fully yourself, I am more fully myself. But not for you and for me alone, but for everyone. As communities become more life-giving in our work together, to make sure all others have access to education and economic resources, as we better equip community leaders to care for uh, what is needed by fellow citizens, then violence can be reduced. Not without resistance, for power never gives up without a demand, as Frederick Douglass said. And we remember the words of Dr. King, that we are all tied together in a single garment of destiny, an inescapable network of mutuality. I can never be what I ought to be, he said, until you are allowed to be what you ought to be. Our faith is never for ourselves alone. It is always for the mutual upbuilding of each other so that the light and life of Christ continues to give to the world can be fully realized in all of the places where that light and life is needed. We are given what we need in these moments of action so that in our very ordinariness, the light and life of Christ can find its way to where it is needed in this world. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. Shape our shared future and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O oh God, for your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely or abandoned. We lift before you those who we name aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. Restore those who are weary from providing direct and indirect medical care in the COVID pandemic. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of community, we give you thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Are there other prayers that we wish to lift up unto the Lord at this time?
God of compassion, you are with us in the joys and sorrows of life. Give your comfort to all who grieve at the death of your servant, Anna, as we give thanks to you for her life and strong faith. Help us to know that your love and life for the world is stronger than death as you welcome Anna into your everlasting embrace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Out of love you gather into your embrace all of Keep us steadfast, steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and all those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, and also with you. you. As we uh, gather for the offering prayer, please know of the gratitude of our congregation and leadership for your faithfulness in giving. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours. And your faithfulness, faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, bread these are signs of your, of your abundant grace. Nourish, nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love, love in our communities and in the world. In the world. Through, Jesus through Jesus Christ, our strength, our and, our strength and our strength. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up Bless your heart. You. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your son to heal our ills, and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his acts of healing, his body given up and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal, as grains scattered on the hillside become one bread. So let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey.
This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ. The giver of a Amen. Receive the blessing. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything all else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God.